Um, my name is Jared Tate. I am the founder and creator of Digibyte, and I'm also the president of Digibyte Holdings of Hong Kong. So it's a pleasure to be speaking before you today, and I'd like to thank you all for being here this morning. So to start off, I wanted to give you all two different numbers. The first one is 90% of world trade goes through international shipping. That's about $18 trillion per year. The other number I wanted to, to share with you this morning is worldwide, there's about 700 million gamers, online video gamers. So what do these have in common? They have the Digibyte blockchain in common. So before I go more into exactly what Digibyte is, I'll, I'll give you a quick introduction. Digibyte is a rapidly growing decentralized blockchain and data security network now used in about 82 countries. Digibyte was launched on January 10th, 2014. Digibyte has some similarities to Bitcoin, but overall we have several significant scalable enhancements to the Digibyte blockchain. So to sum that up, Digibyte is 40 times faster, five times more decentralized, a thousand times more available, and 50 times more scalable than Bitcoin. So just to uh, kind of gauge the audience here, by a show of hands, how many people in the room would feel comfortable explaining what a blockchain is to somebody new. So actually, I'd say the majority, it seems like they're probably uh, fairly new to blockchain. So I'm gonna kind of give a basic uh, introduction to a few things and some of the terminology that's associated with uh, a blockchain. So to start off, currently, there's been over a billion dollars in funding spread across 833 country, or companies that are building uh, software on top of the Bitcoin, pro Bitcoin protocol. Now, that, that sounds good, it's awesome. I mean, there's a lot of, there's an explosion in innovation, but the problem is 99% of the Bitcoin blocks on the network are now full. So I actually took this snapshot last night. So what exactly is a block? The easiest way that I explain it to people is to think of an Excel spreadsheet. And on that Excel spreadsheet, you have a series, it's basically debits and credits, or as we call it, inputs and outputs. So it's essentially a group of all the transactions that occur within a certain period of time. So in the case of Bitcoin, that block timing is 10 minutes. So on this previous slide, as you can see here, the block capacity is limited to one megabyte. And as you can see, pretty much every one of those blocks is full. So the question becomes, how do we scale this technology to the next level? And then the question is, what is a blockchain? Well, essentially a blockchain is just a series of those blocks or spreadsheets that are linked together. So some people call it a distributed ledger, some people call it an updated real-time ledger. Uh, there's various terms that are being applied to that. But what's fascinating about this updated real-time spreadsheet ledger is that according to the FinTech 2.0 paper, this technology could save banks $20 billion a year in reporting costs and auditing costs by the year 2022. So that's a paper I would recommend everybody checking out if you're new to, uh, to blockchain technology and the impacts that it could have. So uh, one of the other differences between Bitcoin and Digibyte is our block timing is actually 50, 15 seconds. So that's how we're able to send transactions much faster. And uh, basically for every one block Bitcoin has, we're gonna have uh, several more. Um, now, just a little bit of history here. Digibyte was first introduced to the world a few blocks from here in 2014. And essentially, with all the, the cryptocurrencies presented that day, we're pretty much the only ones still around and relevant. And since that time, we've been very hard at work developing a complete ecosystem of services and platforms, from a trading exchange to wallets uh, and more. And our hard work's been paying off. Uh, over Easter weekend, we were the third most traded cryptocurrency in the world. Now, what's interesting is, as you can see, the number one and two are Bitcoin and Ethereum. We had more trading volume over three days than our entire market cap. So our focus has not really been on the value of the currency itself. It's been developing underlying solutions using the power of the blockchain to help move this technology forward. Uh, one more quick little kind of term people tend to get hung up on is what is a node? 
All a node is, is it's simply a desktop, laptop, or server that's running a Bitcoin, Digibyte, Ethereum, et cetera wallet. So it's, that's what that is. So here's a snapshot of what our network uh, kind of looks like. The idea is you send and store data in megabytes and gigabytes. Why not send money and secure data in Digibytes? So as you can see, we're used all over the world. A uh, few quick advantages. We have 21 billion Digibytes that will be created in 21 years. Uh, that's a one to a thousand ratio with Bitcoin. Bitcoin has 21 million in 144 years. Uh, we have a 1% reduction each mine or each month with new Digibytes that are coming into circulation. Uh, we, we're flexible, we're able to add new features. Um, so we have five mining algorithms versus one. So that allows us to be a little bit more decentralized with our mining. Our idea is we still want the average desktop video gamer to still be able to mine Digibyte. I actually first got involved with Bitcoin in 2012 as a miner, and I remember uh, mining with my, my gaming PC. But since then, it's uh, become more and more centralized and uh, industrialized that way. Um, so the biggest advantage we have is currently Bitcoin is limited to five to seven transactions per second. Worldwide, on average, Western Union does about 30 transactions per second. PayPal is 130. Visa is about 2,000. Well, last fall, we implemented something known as the DigiSpeed hard fork on the Digibyte network, which currently allows us to handle 280 transactions per second. But by 2021, we'll be able to match Visa. And by 2035, we'll be able to handle 280,000 transactions per second. A few quick interesting facts. Currently, there's 6.2 billion Digibytes in circulation. Uh, we have a block count of 2.2 million. Uh, Bitcoin itself is currently approaching block 400,000. So as far as a real world use case of how extensible is a blockchain, as far as I know, we actually have the largest block count because of our 15 second blocks. And with that, there's actually some issues that will need to be addressed with some of the mobile wallets, especially on the Bitcoin network here in the future that they'll encounter. Uh, currently, we estimate there's about 60 to 100,000 users worldwide that have downloaded at some point a Digibyte wallet. Uh, we've had 3.8 million transactions on our network. In the last 24 hours, we had about 64,000 transactions. Uh, another quick side note, the first Digibyte city is Zutomir in the Netherlands. Uh, if you look that up online, there's actually a whole street and most of the merchants on there actually uh, using Digibyte. I actually bought this shirt in the Netherlands with Digibytes right out of a store. Uh, and that was uh, the, the technology you see there is uh, our sister company, which uh, they're also worth checking out. I don't have time to go into it. It's called Tofu Gear, Omnitech. But the idea is you could basically purchase uh, clothing right out of a fitting room without having to wait in, wait in line. You can use credit or debit cards, but also Digibytes. So I wanted to kind of give a quick introduction and to, to kind of rethink what money is. And to start that off, Adam Smith in Wealth of Nations said, money is like a road which helps in transporting the goods and services produced in a country to the market. But this road does not itself produce anything. Well, I'm here to ask the question, what if money could produce something? The classic definition of money says that money is a medium of exchange, a store of value, and a unit of accounting. Well, what if money was a form of advertisement? What if money was also a highly secure safe where you could store data? And what if money was also a proof of identity? I think you know, the $100 bill is a pretty good example and proof that you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin actually existed at some point. So to redefine what blockchain money is, I would also like to add three different extensions to that definition. Money can be a unit of advertisement, a source of data security, and a proof of identity. So to explain that further and to go into some of our use cases, I need to explain what OP return is. Oops. So the simplest way I explain it to people is imagine you're on a plane from New York to London. Think of the plane as a block, like I described earlier. Each passenger is a transaction, and the number of passengers is limited on the plane. If each passenger is allowed one carry-on bag, you can basically put anything in that carry-on bag as long as it fits in a certain size. And that's essentially what we're doing with OP return uh, on the Digibyte blockchain, and this also is the same with Bitcoin blockchain. So to go into our use case, what is eSports? It's an exploding industry of professional gamers. You have professional teams that play each other just like in the NBA or NFL. 
by 2020, esports is going to be bigger than the NFL audience. The U.S. government's even issuing student-athlete visas, and colleges are giving scholarships. The two most popular games in this esports business is League of Legends and Counter-Strike. And these are actually the two games we've integrated Digibyte with. So a user can sign up on our platform, they can basically start earning Digibytes based upon their in-game performance, and these Digibytes are sponsored by an advertiser. So we beta launched this in November. We've already got about 15,000 users, and we're ready to scale this. And why are we going after that demographic? Well, they're already familiar with digital currency in, in video games. They're tech savvy, they're open to change, and according to a lot of research, they're the hardest demographic for banks as well as other advertisers to address. And we've got basically 700 million potential users. This is our Digibyte gaming wallet. So as they receive a transaction, they can literally see which brand sponsored it. So some of our metrics, uh, basically we've paid out over a million games so far. And if you calculate that the average game was 34 minutes, that's about 64 years of attention that's been captured. And so something we like to talk about is, is what's known as the blockchain attention economy. Um, basically treating attention as a finite commodity. So if we do a, a few calculations with 15,000 users and 100% engagement, that's the equivalent of 1.5 normal ad impressions. And when we scale to 10 million users, that's the same as a billion ad impressions. So what can gamers do with the Digibytes they earn? They can purchase that advertiser's products on Digibyte Market. They can purchase uh, products from other merchants. They can trade for other currencies on exchanges. They can hold or they can actually go and tip their friends and family on social media. So, uh, see here. We, we, we like to refer to this tipping as social remittance, and we believe that's the future of payment. So, currently, we've actually, people are able to send Digibytes through Twitter, through Twitch, through Reddit, and YouTube. So, if you compare the number of cardholders worldwide, I don't know if you can see the metrics here, but it's essentially saying there's 883 million Visa cards out there. According to the US Census, the average person has about 2.25 accounts or credit accounts. So if you divide that by half, you see that there's about 400 million Visa holders worldwide probably. Well, when you look at, at social media, Facebook has 1.5 billion users. So we believe the future of payments is going to be social, and that's why we're setting this up right now with, with our Digibyte tip platform. So I don't really think I have enough time to go into uh, a demo here, but essentially if you look at the FinDev hashtag, you can see where we're actually sending tips uh, and Digibytes through social media. And in fact, if you tweet at Digibyte coin, hashtag Digibyte me, it'll actually send you your first 100 Digibytes. So the, the trade finance, the supply chain problem, Today's global supply chain requires trust, accuracy, transparency, and efficiency. So a lot of the documents that are used to process 18 trillion in, in trade, for instance, letters of credit, bills of lading, purchase orders, a lot of these are still done with a fax machine. So what we're actually aiming to do with our pilot program, and this is what we're announcing here today, is we're gonna actually start registering supply chain documents on the Digibyte blockchain. We've already made a deal with an uh, international freight forwarder, a customs broker, as well as some factories in China, and we're getting ready to basically pilot 250 million in receivables that will be secured in the Digibyte blockchain. And so part of the thing that we're doing is this platform called DigiSign, and I'm going to give you a real quick demo. And actually, here's my tweet demo. Uh, basically, I just tipped... FinDev, the FinDev account, uh, 100 digibytes. But, so I have a, a sample bill of lading here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to take this, and I uploaded the document, and it created this unique hash, which if this document was altered in any way, that number would change. So I simply submit that, and it tells me I need to send two digibytes. So if I go to my wallet, and we, this is, uh, this is the beta demo version of this product. So I'm gonna send that transaction. 
And then as soon as it's picked up by the network, basically it'll recognize it, and then we'll be able to go back and forever search that in the Digibyte blockchain. So as there's a confirmation. And so from this point forward, we can always go back and reference that. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, come see me, and, and we have a lot more going on as well too. But uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>